Praise God, YouTube Christians. Let's go. <laughs> Listen to me. I wake up normal, coffee, you know, excited about the rapture. Think about the live, you know, clapper feeds going nuts. YouTube feeds going nuts. The whole thing. All glory to God. So I'm thinking this morning, menorah pops into my head, right? So you got the menorah in the vision of Zechariah 3 with the two olive sticks, which is Moses and Elijah. We talked about it on the live last night. <clears throat> you got the seven letters to the seven churches. You got the first thing that John saw on the Lord's day, the menorah. So seven, the menorah, Hanukkah associated with the menorah. So I'm like, man, I got to dig into the menorah. There, there's something there. I also wanted to look at the contemporaries of Zechariah and Haggai, Somebody sent me a message last night that it was Nehemiah. Now, Nehemiah was is more like a history book, so it'll record the event. So I'll see if there's something in there. But I thought there was actually another prophet in that time, like an Amos or Zephaniah. So I still got to look into that. God, I believe, puts menorah in my head. Um, so... You know, I'm. Uh, this is what I got to do, and then, then I get this thought that, wait a second, somebody said Brother Patrick from End Time Watchmen did something on the menorah. So, and, and listen, I can't watch everybody's video. I don't have enough time. It, it, and look, it's not an excuse. People send me video clips all the time. Hey, watch this. What do you think? Watch this. What do you think? Some of these videos are an hour, three hours. I, I can't watch it. I got my own studies, my own things going on. I don't say that rudely. I get it. We're all searching, but I'm, I'm getting a lot of messages. So, you know, I just don't have time. So it's not that I don't want to watch anybody else. And when I do, I think it's all controlled by God. So I remembered that end time watchman, Brother Patrick, did something on the menorah. So I watched that video this morning, and he he comes up with December fourteenth. So and he gave his reasons. Hey, stupid messages. So I'm sitting there and praising God because as he's doing this, I'm like, oh, that's what that means. Oh, that's what that means. So it's December seventh. So he proved that it's December 7th, you know, without him knowing it, of course, because he's looking at the 14th. But this this won't be a long video. All glory to God. This, this is what I've been trying to tell you. God knows what I got in my brain. That's it. That's all I can tell you. I, I woke up, coffee. I'm not really thinking much. Menorah, I watch his video, and it leads into another golden nugget that shows it's going to be the 24th day of the ninth month, December 7th. That's right. Two days away. Oh, glory to God. I don't, look, I'm just firing this up and we're going to get through it. Okay. Zechariah chapter one. Okay. I saw by night and behold a man riding upon a red horse and he stood among the myrtle trees that were at the bottom. Behind him there were red horses speckled and white. Okay, <clears throat> so the verse prior is the time change upon the four and 20th day of the 11th month. So now we know we're 60 days into the tribulation. The rider on the red horse is getting ready to ride. All I wanna bring up here is the word white on the end. So I redug up my notes and that was to be purged. So that was connected. That word purged was connected to Daniel 10. And listen, you know what's crazy? We're learning so much information, we almost instantly forget it. So all these nuggets of revelation that God has given us, it goes right out of our brain, and then we want the next one. Oh, what's the next one? What's the next one? We're forgetting everything. So again, Patrick's video 
tied all this in to what we even talked about in the live last night. So, Brother Patrick, if you're watching this, you'll absolutely love it. Daniel 12.10, many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. That's the purifying. It means pure. White means pure. It means to purge. So that's what that white horse is going to do. So if you're the wicked, you won't understand. You'll die in the tribulation. You'll ultimately go to hell. If you're going to be purged, you will die, but you'll be a tribulation saint and you'll get saved. So all glory to God. Okay, so that, that was one part. <clears throat> I, for, I forgot why I wanted to do that. No, no, I didn't. Hold on. So now we go to this, what we read last night. Okay, so get this. This was Zechariah 3. We read this on the live. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. I said, this is a second coming judgment. First Corinthians 6, 2 and 3. We judge the world. We judge angels. There's Satan being judged. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan. Even the Lord hath chosen Jerusalem. Rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? You know, Israel. Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him, he said, behold, I have caused thy iniquity to pass from thee and I will clothe thee with change of raiment, the white clothes, the righteousness of Christ. It's the only clothes anybody can wear who's going to make it in eternity. Praise God. Okay. Zechariah 3, 5. And I said, let them set a fair miter upon his head. So they set a fair miter upon his head. Now the word fair is that word white, to purge. So it's all tied in. So the horse was to purge. They got purged, made pure. That's the word white. So it's the fair miter means they were purged, went through the judgment, and now they're coming out believing in Christ, clothed in his righteousness. So let them set a fair miter upon his head. So they set a fair miter upon his head and clothed him with garments, and the angel of the Lord stood by. So please, this isn't one person. This is Israel. This is Jacob. Joshua is Jacob in this typology. They're going to be the priests. Listen, the Jews, Israel, is going to run the millennial temple. Christ will sit in there and rule and reign, but they're going to run the daily sacrifices. Do you get that? So God will finally have his people. They will have their kingdom. They will have the proper temple. So they're going to do the temple stuff. So when you see high priest, it's more to them. When you see kings, it's more to us, the heavenly body of Christ. So again, they're going to rule the 12 tribes. Now, now listen, this is utter gold. And the angel of the Lord, it says, protested unto Joshua. I don't like that word because we look at it differently. It means he solemnly, um, oh, what's the word? Let me look it up. Hold on. I had it down. It's a solemn admonition, but it's better than that. It means to testify, to bear witness. It means to be restored, okay? So it's, let me just find it here. Affirm, that's the word I was looking for. He solemnly affirms them and then admonishes them, okay? That makes sense. So I just don't like the word protest. So watch this. <clears throat> so the angel of the Lord solemnly affirmed unto Joshua, Israel, this represents all of Israel at the second coming. I said it last night. Watch this. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou will walk in my ways and if thou will keep my charge, 
then thou shalt also judge my house. You see, they're running the temple. They're going to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. This is all perfect. And shall, and shall also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Man, even the standby, that could be us. Walk among the places. Give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Man, this, this is just unbelievable. And here's the next verse. We did this on the live last night. Hear now, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch, Jesus, all caps. So the men being wondered at, the men that stand by is us. They're probably wondering, man, who, who are these guys in the vision? Zachariah seeing this. Praise God. It's all perfect. You will see this. So anyway, so I read this last night, second coming. This Joshua had filthy garments, put the good garments on him, put a crown on his head. Now stay with me. Jesus has two wives, Rachel and Leah. We're Leah, the Jews are Rachel. So now when Brother Patrick went to Esther, and that's why he's looking for December 14th, maybe instead of December 7th, uh-uh. Look at Hanukkah, Second Tabernacles. Look at it as a day is as a year. We're raptured on the 7th. Seven days later, seven years later, putting the crown on Esther's head. Bam. Do you see that? I'm watching his video. This all floods right up here in the noggin. Esther 2.16. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus. Now think about this. Esther is a Jew. This is why it wasn't our rapture typology. Queen Esther is a Jew. There's the typology. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his house, royal, in the 10th month. So as Patrick said, seven days later is the first day of the 10th month. So forget the day count, it's a year count. So December 14th typology is after the seven years. So Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his house royal in the 10th month, which is the month Tibet, which that means goodness. I looked it up, one-time usage, goodness. In the seventh year of his reign. Why did God put that in there? In the seventh year of his reign, that's when Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus, the king, Jesus, the returning king of kings and lord of lords. I'm telling you, I think God gave this to me watching his video. So Esther was taken to the king Ahasuerus into the house royal in the 10th month, which is the month Tibet, in the seventh year of his reign. And the king loved Esther above all the women, and she obtained obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. See, the 10 virgins, the, the whole thing. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king made a great feast to all his princes and his servants, even Esther's feast. And he made a release to the provinces and gave gifts according to the state of the king. Listen, that, that's perfect. So listen, in a crazy way, how can I figure this out? What if our whole complete feast is in heaven when we marry the Lord? So what if the feast of the lamb when he comes back is because it's his original wife, Rachel, who he brings back just like he forgave us and brought us back. And now this celebration in the typology of Esther is their feast 
their celebration because this is God bringing them back. He saves Israel all in one day. It could be a combined feast. I don't know, but there's something to that. All glory to God. So again, and I said, take the clothes off of Joshua. Let them set a fair miter upon his head. That's diadem. That's a crown. So he's getting a crown. Queen Esther is getting a crown. So that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Joshua got the crown in Zechariah at the end. It, I already said last night, it's the second coming. It's when Satan's being judged. Israel is looking on him. They get saved in a day. And now the typology is in Esther 10-1, seven days later, seven years later. So we still go on the 7th. That's the return, the 14th. It's not days, it's years. Praise God, I hope you see that. I don't think there was anything else I needed to add to that. It just confirms it. All glory to God.